Hello again, hope you're all doing well. And for today's video, it's going to be something slightly different. Um, I think at the uh, Liverpool John Lennon Airport, I showed you one of my camera bags. So I thought it might be a change, if you like, to show you the four different camera bags that I own. Um, I think it's fair to say that hold alls, camera bags, gadget bags as I used to call them, they are an extremely personal choice and I do not believe that there is a single camera hold all or bag to suit everybody and indeed to suit every occasion. That's why you've seen the title of today's video. So I thought I'd just go through the four different bags that I own and give you an idea of what I tend to carry in each one and why I've got four different ones to choose from if you like. So to start off with I'm going to pick the one that you've probably seen um, more often than anything else and that is my think tank. It's a shoulder bag, um, an over-the-shoulder bag really and this is the one that always carries my badge, which I've told you about before. So it normally lives over my shoulder like so. I like this because it's not obtrusive, it's not carrying obviously valuable equipment of any description. So the think tank, the particular model is a retrospective 20, and I guess the 20 refers to the capacity usually in litres doesn't it um, it has on the back a full width zip pocket which is good for you know paperwork or notebooks or um, anything like that really i would probably get a thin waterproof jacket in there as well um, if required it has a hand shoulder strap which is adjustable for length and in the main compartment <clears throat> I'll just try and show you uh, the main compartment you have a couple of uh, dividers at either end which are held in with velcro so that um, under normal circumstances what I would tend to carry in here if I was going out purely for myself, i.e. not intending to do a YouTube video, I would have a camera body with a lens already attached and um, a couple of other lenses um, to go in each side pocket. Uh, the front pocket on here, uh, bits and pieces. Um, it can be for, oh, I don't know, memory cards, um, whatever you want to put in there not very spacious but um, I quite often carry my house keys and my wallet in there. Um, if I am doing a YouTube video then it's usually camera with one lens, the GoPro which is what I'm filming on and my wireless microphone and that's about it really. What else have I got in here? Uh, <laughs> a bag of silica desiccant gel, the stuff that always says do not eat because it's poisonous. I don't actually throw these away because they do absorb um, damp and um, if by any chance they do get damp you can bung them in the microwave, uh, dry the silica gel out and reuse it again. Not that I've ever had to do that but there you go. So that's my um, retrospective 20. The flap, uh, I like this idea because um, under normal circumstances I don't bother using these but we have Velcro pads on the front and they match up to... Uh, so these are the, the, the soft pads on the front and you can match those up with the hook type on here so that uh, when you close it the bag is actually the front flap is actually um, secured to a point 
but I like this because um, it's not an obvious camera hold all and for me who lives in the city it's ideal to be unobtrusive. Can't carry a lot of gear in it but my goodness me they are extremely well made. Uh, the gauge of the canvas or the fabric, it's some sort of um, canvas fabric, is very heavy. The strapping, the webbing, everything about it is heavy duty. It's going to last me a lifetime, that's for sure. And there are a couple of, sorry, I should have pointed out, there are a couple of accessory pockets on either end. Um, and normally, if I'm filming using the GoPro, then the little selfie stick lives in one of these side pockets on the end. So there we are, Retrospective 20 from Think Tank. It's probably the bag that gets more use than any of the other three. That's bag number one. So bag number two comes from a classic British company by the name of Billingham. This is where I have to embarrass myself and tell you that I have no idea what model this is. Uh, Billingham over the years have produced many different models in different sizes with different names. Um, they've never really been big on putting the model numbers actually on their product. I've had it literally for 20 years and it's hardly been touched to the point where I actually forgot that I'd got it until about uh, two or three months ago. And... Um, there it was up in the attic, so I have rescued it. I have started to use it. Um, they are a beautiful, beautiful bag. Um, one thing I would suggest to anybody thinking about getting a billion bag is to go for the canvas ones as opposed to their other range, which I think is called something like Fiber Light or Fiber Night, um, which is um, a different kind of material. The canvas ones tend to gain a lovely patina as the years go by um, and this one really hasn't got much of a patina because it's not had a very hard life. Um, it's not particularly big. In terms of um, the capacity, it's rather difficult for me to show you. It has um, uh, a dividing pocket which is movable inside. But the main section is plenty big enough for um, a DSLR, or in my case, my um, OMD EM1, um, with a couple of extra lenses and or the GoPro and the radio mic. Then additionally, it has two pockets on the front. The flap is held down by Velcro and they are big enough to accept battery packs, whatever else it might be that you want to put in there. Um, it's closed, when, when it's completely closed, it's held shut with a zipper, which closes the main compartment. And then on top of that, it has a flap over the top with these two lovely leather straps. And then over the whole thing comes the handle with really lovely heavy grade um, leather inscribed carrying handle. They are fantastically well made bags and um, chances are if you've seen a professional photographer out in the wilds, National Geographic photographers and things like that, more often than not you'll see them using a Billingham bag. Um, I like it. It's a bit more obvious to the layman that it might be containing something rather valuable. But I like it. I don't put the strap across my body. It just hangs so nicely on my shoulder. Um, big enough, as I say, for, in my case, EM1 with the 12 to 50 and a couple of accessory lenses and or the GoPro and radio mic. It's a cracking bag. I love it. I'm going to have to give it some more use. It needs roughing up and wearing out a bit more. 
So bag number three is from Lowepro, as indeed are both of the final two bags that I own. Now, the first one is designated as a slingshot. Uh, this is the one that I took with me uh, when I went down to the viewing area at Liverpool John Lennon Airport. And um, this is a slingshot 200 AW, which stands for all weather. The way that you use these slingshot bags, they have a single strap that goes over your shoulder. I always get confused here. There we are. Over my shoulder and over my head. Okay, so that's how I would normally carry it. And there is a strap here which you can tighten up. Not that I need much tightening with the size of my stomach these days, but there you go. Um, that's how you would carry it. It sits very nicely on the back. And then when you want to gain access to your equipment, the point is that you don't have to take the bag off your body. You simply undo this strap and then sl sling the whole thing around so that it's in front of you and you can then open up the compartment in front to gain access to your camera in the front. In fact, if I just grab my EM1, so there we are, the EM1 would sit in there like so, so I can gain access to it immediately without having to take the bag off my body. So it's very good if you're in um, a very wet environment, nowhere dry to put the bag down. This is ideal because it means that you can get hold of your camera really quickly. It also means that you can, uh, by opening the flap completely, and I'll just do that for you, if you open it up completely, now you wouldn't normally do this with it around your body, um, you can gain access to the other compartments in here which will hold various lenses and bits and bobs. So typically this would take, uh, most recently down at the airport, this accepted my EM1 Mark I with the 100-300 Lumix lens fitted to it. And um, in the other compartments, I had the GoPro and the radio mic. And I think I also took the 50mm 1.4 and Similux lens with me as well. So it's an interesting concept. I do like it. There are limiting straps here, which we close up like so. The idea of those is that you can open up to gain access to your camera, but you can't then have the compartment flop open and all your equipment fall out on the floor. That would not be a good idea. Um, so there we are. Then additionally, it has a small pouch on the front, which is great for filters and batteries, and a slightly larger pouch up here which is where I normally would keep the selfie stick for the GoPro and um, maybe a waterproof, something like that. Uh, the all-weather low pros um, come with a built-in, and I've never even taken this out, but behind this flap in the base, there is a very thin waterproof cover, which you pull out and it covers the entire bag in a, a waterproof membrane so that's a, a nice example these are available in different sizes this is the low pro slingshot 200 all weather aw i suppose if it has a downside for me not that it matters to me that much um, you can only fit either a really tiny tripod a very very small lightweight tripod on there um, there's only a couple of fixing points and they're not really the best in the world but as i say i'm not a great user of tripods and bag number four as i said is another low pro 
and um, here we are. This is one of their flip side range. This is a flip side 300 and uh, the idea behind these is that they are a fairly standard uh, backpack with your two shoulder straps. Um, but if you want to access your equipment, you put it down with the back of the bag, if you like, on the ground, and then the internal part zips open, giving you access to the interior. Um, this bag is large enough to accept pretty much everything that I need uh, for a full day shooting. I have a pouch up here which normally keeps the 100 to 300 Lumix lens nice and tidy. Um, EM1 with the 12 to 50. Uh, I have my filter set in here, the magnetic filter set. Um, it would normally take uh, also the 50mm 1.4 Similux lens the GoPro, the wireless microphone, and um, various other bits and bobs. And it has a pouch on the side, which is ideal for memory cards, batteries, that kind of thing. Uh, there is a mesh pocket on the other side, into which I normally put the um, selfie stick for the GoPro. And unlike the um, slingshot bag, this one has a fitting which is large enough to accept my, albeit not very big, but nevertheless, it's a uh, pretty much four foot tall tripod, travel tripod. Now this um, is, Yeah, this is not the all-weather version. I'm sorry, I had to stop and think then. It's not the all-weather version with the waterproof covering, but in here, in the flap underneath, which I hope you can see, um, there is the pocket for the leg of your tripod if you decide that um, it's necessary. And if it's not necessary, it just lives out of the way in the base. So there we are, that is the Flipside 300 from Lowepro. I've had Lowepro bags before for many years and they've not let me down yet. Hope you found that enlightening, useful maybe, I don't know. You might also um, see that I've arranged some of my equipment here around the computer. Uh, I'll put the EM1 Mark II back. There we go. I'm not today going to give you a run around uh, what's on here. Um, the only thing I would draw your attention to is the fact that there is a space here and that's been left specifically because I've got uh, something that has arrived recently which I am evaluating and I'll tell you about in the next video. So for now, I'm going to say enjoy your photography, enjoy whatever camera bags you have, <laughs> and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.